Right now, we are changing our environment faster than we've ever changed it before. Higher levels of greenhouse gases are leading to ocean acidification, climate change, rising sea levels, and melting glaciers. At the same time, we are destroying habitats, displacing native animals, and contaminating millions of gallons of water on a daily basis. When we think of the cause of environmental problems such as these, we often envision factories billowing black smoke or the relentless clear cutting of the Amazon rainforest. And to say it bluntly, these are really bad for our environment. But still, there's one major part of our lives that we don't often think about as an environmental threat, even though it is. I'm talking about our food. Right now, U.S. agriculture consumes about 80% of all the fresh water used in the United States. It uses about half of all the land area, and it produces about 9% of all U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. This is equivalent to the amount of carbon dioxide that's released by about half of the cars on the U.S. roads today. Food has a massive impact on our environment. But it's because of this massive impact that food also has the incredible opportunity to become a platform for creating environmental change. You see, not all food is created equal in terms of its environmental impact. So why don't we ask ourselves, what did it take for our food to get here, just as much as we ask what sounds good? Now, this sounds great in theory, but unfortunately, the food industry isn't exactly what we'd call transparent. As customers, we only see what the food industry wants us to see. So if we want to start making informed environmental decisions about our food, then we have to become investigators, the Sherlock Holmes of the food industry. So where do we start? Well, the answer is Google. We need to start doing research into the food that we eat and the brands that we support. Just start asking questions like, what's the difference between shade-grown coffee and normal coffee? Is farm fish or wild-caught fish better for the environment? And what are the benefits of organic food anyway? We can ask all these questions, and we will probably figure out a lot of things that we didn't know before. But while doing a research, it's also important to note that pretty much all sources have some amount of bias in them. So read everything with a grain of salt. Just realize that any information you come across, it may or may not be the complete truth. So make sure you look at both sides of every story. Once you're done with your research, you can decide what issues you want to address and how you personally can address them. This may be buying food that you know is organic in order to help prevent the leaching of fertilizer and pesticide into groundwater. It may be boycotting all products made with palm oil in order to help pr protect the environment of some endangered species, such as tigers and orangutans. Or it may be going all out and becoming a vegetarian or vegan in order to significantly lower your carbon footprint. This part is totally up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to eat, but I encourage you to choose something that you care about and something that you can stay committed to. No matter if it's a big change or a small one, it will make a difference. Now, I understand that many of us don't have the money to buy all organic or locally grown food. And speaking to my fellow college goers, I get that we usually don't know what brands we're eating in our school cafeterias or where the food was produced. But that does not mean that we can't still make a difference through our food. For example, if you wanted to lower your carbon footprint, then you could eat meat once a day rather than eating meat twice a day. If you wanted to address problems of drought, then you can try to limit the amount of water-intensive foods you eat, such as beef and milk. You can even address waste by trying to get the right portion size so you don't throw any food away. No matter what diet you choose to build for yourself, this is a huge step forward to creating a more environmentally sound food system. Now, I have to admit that if one person refuses to eat a certain kind of food once, no significant change is going to happen. However, if even one person stays committed to their food cause, then that is when real changes can start. For example, if one person decided to replace all of their beef with chicken, then in a single year, that one person would produce about 1,000 fewer pounds of carbon dioxide. They would need about two and a half fewer acres of land, and they would need to use about 22,000 fewer gallons of water to produce their food. 
Now these numbers are rough, depending on the way that the chicken and beef was raised. But they still give us a pretty good idea of the magnitude of change that even a single person can make. And this is just one example. Now imagine if everyone, in some way, built a new diet for themselves. Potentially, we could prevent thousands of tons of greenhouse gas emissions, prevent the contamination of millions of gallons of water, and protect ecosystems around the world from further habitat fragmentation and destruction. Food is an incredible platform for creating environmental change. But so far, we've only talked about the changes that can come about by our individual choices. The amazing part about food is that everything is linked. So together, our individual choices can lead to large-scale, long-lasting change. Simply by buying environmentally conscious food, we are demanding the change to the food industry itself. For example, if more people started to spend their money on certified sustainable seafood rather than non-certified seafood, then the companies with the certification would become more profitable. This would then push more companies to want to get that certification, and the only way for them to get it would be for them to change the system they have to a more environmentally friendly option. Now, this is just an example, but the idea can be applied to nearly any part of the food industry. No matter what the change is, if the customer demand stays constant enough, then the new greener system will become ingrained in the food industry. By demanding changes to the way our food is produced, we are pushing our food companies, companies into the 21st century to not only acknowledge our declining environment, but so we can help improve our environment and keep it healthy for years to come. If we want to live in a more sustainable future, we first have to change the way that we eat as individuals. We all buy food, and we all need food to live. So this is something that everyone can do. No matter who you are, where you are, or how much money you have, you can make a difference through your food. The food industry is incredibly diverse, and there are many choices to be made. So I challenge you, all of you, to do some research and dare to build a plate for yourself that is better for the world. Now I'll ask you this. How will you decide what to eat? Thank you.